I feel like people from New York, their bagel orders are insane. Wide variety. Wide variety. Insane, dude. Like a wide, wide array, sure, but like a wide variety of psychoticness like it's it's pretty wild what i hear people dude i was at a bagel i was at a bagel store and i was gonna order actually it was another uh toasted everything with butter and jelly and yeah. uh there was a guy he was waiting for a bacon egg and cheese and as the guy he saw order it's a normal bacon egg and cheese that's a normal fucking order <laughs> right that's a normal order until he uh looks at the guy who's making it and he just goes yeah you can put some butter and jelly on the bagel too for me so he put he put butter and jelly on his bacon egg and cheese oh Okay, and you like that? Uh, I just noted. I just clocked it. <laughs> and you were like, I got to try this like, at some point. I was like, that's fascinating. Okay. Um, I would never do that. But you are doing it. That's what you not do. Written, just, I'm not doing it without the bacon, egg, or cheese. Oh. Oh, he got the bacon, egg, and he cheese. He was getting a oh, bacon, egg, and cheese. Okay, okay. And then he told the guy, he saw the guy like was making his bagel, like toasting it. He was like, hey, can you put some butter and jelly on the bagel before you put the bacon, egg, and cheese on there? Okay. Okay. I got you. I got yeah. you. I got you. All right. Well, yeah, my man's my man's must have been hurting. I was he was plotting. He was, yeah, <laughs> something's up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but speaking, speaking of sweet and savory, oh, Joe Tricoli, everybody. <laughs> what is up, brother? My slime. What? Is- <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's all good, my man. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, our producer Joe has just arrived with our bagels. Uh, yeah. The podcast started off with just coffee and croissants. If uh, if that isn't a podcast name already, like if somebody has coffee and croissants, yeah, that's definitely a podcast. That, you think that's a podcast? It's got to be right at this point. Um, but Joe is back with the bagels, it's like coffee and croissants, and it's just yeah. like two ants just having a podcast with butter and jelly. With butter and jelly. Thank you very much. I will. I will wait until after the pod. Yeah. Okay. I, I will use one. You know, I'll do that time. too. Because I'm a. Because yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh, the hat! Oh, the puff! <laughs> take the take the hat off! Take the hat off! <laughs> you just got bumped. You're now our uh, associate producer. Yeah, you were you, a consulting producer you, you before. You've given us a full reason to create a Patreon channel now. Yeah, that that entire it only benefits you. There. Yeah, if we yeah. if we start an OnlyFans of just uh, <laughs> of just you interrupting the podcast, uh, I think we would we would. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> find find the holes in that logic. I think that's what I say. <laughs> Oh, so uh, the coffee and croissants are now yeah added with bagels, which we will enjoy after the pod. We are on our forty third episode, which is dope. Forty third episode. We get stats, bro. Stats forty three. We're at our uh, we're at our Troy Palomalu episode. We uh, we would be there. Yes, that was yeah. his number forty three. That was his number. Um, shout out my Yinzers. Shout out the Yinzers out there, <laughs> Pittsburgh. Uh, Never been shouted out before on a podcast <laughs> about film and television and shenanigans. <laughs> Unless it's based in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, outside of the greater Pittsburgh area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out Morgantown, just so we're clear. Yes, on what side we actually claim. Yes, um, that's correct. <laughs> but yo, uh, yo, what's been up? It's been, it's been, it's been a couple weeks. Wow, well, what's actually, what? Yeah, it's been last week since we last talked. But yeah, what's been up? Uh, well, so <laughs> last, so last night I, uh, I received an award. Yes. Okay. I didn't know where we should start. I didn't know where I didn't know where you wanted to start. Do you want to start with Dune no, or do you want to no, start no, with no. this? No, start with this. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, speaking of our newly appointed associate producer, Joe, um, I was invited to a uh, murder mystery party Ooh. and uh, it was disco themed. Just Disc- panic at the disco. Okay. And um, shout out Caroline and Rishi. They were the ones that organized it specific. Uh, well, Caroline, it seems like really had the really had the. Uh, the creative vision behind it. Okay, so she had the creative vision and she was the host? Yes. Is that, okay. Yeah, nice, so she nice. was, you know, she's making all the announcements, organized everything. She did a great job. Awesome. And uh, my character was, uh, it was, uh, so my character was Leo Lights. Leo Lights. He was a lighting technician at the bar that we were at. Oh. And so I, what that basically, uh, basically my costume was just, uh, I had a disco ball and a flashlight. Okay. And so I just had like a little flash. I had a little disco ball, not a little disco ball, like a mini disco ball uh, attached to my hip that I would just pull out <laughs> and I'd bang a flashlight on it. And it would just like it would just light up the disco ball. And uh, everyone around me, like in my vicinity, seemed really cool with it. Uh, apparently, the bartenders were less than thrilled 
about it because it was like getting <laughs> it was like getting in their eye line. It was blind in the bartenders. <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt bad about that. I would go up for like a twelve dollar drink and give them a twenty and just be like, just take, just keep everything. I don't I'm so sorry. Because I could just like at one point I think I went up to I went up to the bar, the bar a bartender looked at me and they were like, I'll I'll get you later. Uh <laughs> Which one I, one w- second. Yeah, yeah. What which, do you want? Exactly. I, I, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Which I, uh, which, uh, which my anxiety tells me that I deserved. Um, <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah, it was a great time. And so uh, at the end of it, you have to pick like who you think did it and why and da da da. Who was best dressed and who is uh, who is the best actor? Okay. And uh, I was just having a drink, and Caroline came up to me and handed me this. Oh. <gasps> Dylan, my first Best ever actor. acting award. Oh my good! Thank yeah. you. The, the vocally provided air horn is back, baby. Yeah, air horn, air horn's back, baby. As I look over award at horn. Joe, award horn. shirtless on the couch, <laughs> eating his bagel. Yeah, we did say we're starting an OnlyFans with Joe, so uh, <laughs> he took it to heart. Yeah. <laughs> Uh yes, so this was very congratulations. Thank man. you. This was very this was very funny to me. Oh, I also also should say I had <laughs> probably the selling point was that I had a headpiece on. Like oh, I, dude, like, we have full footage. Of oh you. yeah, it's let's, being played. Let's, let's roll the tape. Yeah, let's, let's get to that. <laughs> yeah. So anytime that like Caroline would like make an announcement right after she stopped talking, and there was like a still silence, I would just like start talking to the headphone and be like, "All right, disco ball light in three, <laughs> two, one, disco ball right, disco ball right." Yeah, <laughs> just. That's and uh, that's, I, yeah, I really sold. I really sold the character. That is which true was, dedication, uh, my brother. That is yeah. That is what. That is why I have full confidence that you will have a future in this industry. Because uh, I won best actor at a murder mystery party. With that is one thousand percent the validation that everyone looks for. Yeah, in their thirties or as in their thirties as their someone 30s. who's been acting like <laughs> s- at least attempting to be professional in the last eight years. Uh, yeah, this is very. Th- I found this to be very funny. Rule and, number thirty-two: uh, Enjoy the little things, bro. Enjoy the little things, and I will enjoy this. Thank yes. you, Caroline and Rishi. Um, I told them if I ever do win like a Golden Globe or any sort of like uh, major acting award where I have to talk in front of a lot of people, uh, they will they will get a shout out for giving me my first acting award. I'm sure them. And- I told that to Rishi, and he was like, "Oh man," like he was kind of sad for me. <laughs> <laughs> which is very sweet and very funny. I see his reaction. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm sure that's very, uh, that's very, that would be very much appreciative of them and their children at some point. Yes. If, uh, yeah. No, it was, case. no, we had a, gr- yeah, we had a great time as you can tell by the video footage. Um, yeah. yeah. So that was, so that was last night. And, uh, and the night before that, we saw a little picture Mm. I don't know how many I don't know how many people are talking about this movie or how many people are seeing it, but it's uh, it's called Dune Part Two. Mm. You must be really anxious to talk about this movie. I mean, how, how do you not how do you not want to talk about this movie? I didn't say I don't want to talk about it. I'm excited well, to talk about it. Let's you're excited to talk about. It. Did you want to talk about anything else before we no really dive into Dune? Let's do it. No, before we start writing uh we got a lot to talk about. God, so. what's I? I'm bad with the names. Like, what's the name of like the big sandworm? Uh, I don't remember. I'm worse with the names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the actual name of the like, what do they call like the big, like the huge sandworm, the like the sandworm, like. Oh, ah, uh, oh my god, this is terrible podcasting. But well, no, I thought he called it like the grandfather worm or some shit. Shy Halud. Shy Halud. Oh, Thank that you. was that was the name of the biggest worm. Yeah, so that was the so that's the one that Timothy Chalamet rides. Okay, is the Shy Hadoud. Okay. Um, but Halud, Halud, excuse me, Shy Halud. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, this movie. This mo- movie. This movie rocks. That's uh, yeah. That that's how you describe it. This movie rocks. If you saw it in IMAX, which we did, which we it did, it was uh, I like on the it. biggest screen in the world. I was say, dude, that was the biggest screen I think I'd ever seen a movie in my life. I yeah. Just looking up, like, damn, fucking Alexander Skarsgård looks. Mega huge, um, and I really liked the set design. I thought that shit was fire. Uh, oh, dude! Like every like the, every like, like below the line aspect of a movie, like like the cinematography, set design, costume, like yeah, like all the hard labor stuff that isn't like the you know the directing, the acting, the yeah. writing, um, is like at an absolute ten. 
all the time, especially it, like with these two movies, these past two movies are doing like um, definitely setting itself up to where I'm like all of all the rest of it. I think I mentioned as soon as it ended, I was like Mission Impossible really got good at three. So who's to say that the best to come is yet to come <laughs> with Dune? Uh, yeah, well, I think with Dune, though, is that like there's a number of books that like. If from and this is from someone who's literally not read a single page of any of the Dune books. Neither have I. Um, but there's like multiple books, and apparently it starts kind of like trailing off a little bit. Okay. Um. So, from what I've been told, is that uh, it's the first two Dune books that are like, like the people that love Dune, like that's what they think of. And that's gotcha. What, so this was the completion of the first book. So the next two. So okay. the next. One, possibly two, would be right. Would be this other book. Fair enough. And I honestly didn't see it going as like far as a Mission Impossible. It just reminded me of like how the sequels I mean, it's one of the trilogies. greatest. It's one of the greatest sequels in the history of cinema. Yeah, like that's ultimate. That's ultimately like where I stand on this movie. That me too, and it makes me look forward to the next one. I think that's ultimately what my immediate reaction was. I was like, damn, I'm just as excited for the third one as it was for the second one. Yeah. Um. What the second one I thought did a lot better than the first one is it actually ended where it felt like, okay, cool. I just fully picked my nose, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't watching you. Do I just that. completely forgot that I was on camera and I just fully <laughs> just picked my nose. We, that's fun. Anyway, continue. Sorry. What I love about this picture is, uh, yeah, it ends on a note where it's pretty clear. Okay next story setup isn't like the beginning of it, like the beginning of the movie. Cause it felt like the, the first right. one ended where like it was the beginning of the movie. Um, yeah. Cause they were just walking out into the desert. And um, this second one though, it, it really tied everything together from the first one. And then I really, that's one reason that I really, uh, that's one of the reasons that I really like it is that um, it immediately starts right where the first one ended. Yeah. Which is great. And it also implements some real, villains uh in the form of austin butler which was dude so that dude he was my favorite part of the movie he was he was my favorite (laughs) he was my favorite character in the movie (laughs) austin butler was fucking phenomenal he was so menacing dude he was so evil yeah it was great yeah i actually had a i had a buddy who's red dune and is like a big dude fan he was like dude austin butler's character you have you are not ready yeah and i wasn't and he that was like that was like the sickest introduction to a character. Yeah, and I mean um, that I've was, seen it, that I've seen in a while. And it was like, okay, cool. So he's gonna fight Timothy Chalamet at some point. I really hope it's in this movie. And then, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, I'm. I was really worried that <laughs> yeah. I wasn't gonna see. I until wasn't gonna see one, the, like, until the next one. Yeah, and then they fight, and it's it's pretty it's sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, he was great. Um, Javier Bardem, dude, Javi, just having Javi. <laughs> Javi's <laughs> having so much fun in the desert. So much. Has written. Has written. Has written. How could he not be? Yes. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, we um, we Just loved. gone full fanatic. Dude, that, all right. So that's also. So we loved it. We not loved to. Yeah. You know, uh, but something that caught me was like yeah. with this movie is that like just how layered it actually is and like how many yeah. like things it actually is kind of like talking. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Talking about in terms of like. You know, religion and prophecy and like, uh, yeah. you know, it's like religion in the future and like, yeah, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, it's like religion in the future with the understanding of we can travel from planet to planet. So obviously, whatever, you know, God or, you know, higher being we believe in other than the emperor is, uh, you know. Basically. Over the entire universe, like it's not just over one planet or yeah. one one centralized area. Like it's it's worlds that they're they're interacting in, which makes it just that much more unique of a storyline. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like you can unpack for days, like how yeah, layered I, this is. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna want to watch it again. I want. Oh see, yeah, for sure. I want to see it again. Uh, in uh. And maybe not as big a screen, honestly. Yeah, well, that was that was my thing with watching the first one a second time. Yeah. I really enjoyed it a second time. The first time, I was like, oh, man, it seems like I'm watching this and it's a chore. Whereas <laughs> the second time around, I was like, oh, I can follow it all the way through. Yeah. It sounds great. It's it's good. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Dune, 
yeah, Dune is just a movie where it's like uh, you got to you got to just you like the first time around, you're just like bracing yourself of like, what is happening? Yeah. Um, in like the best way in like the uh, in a really like entertaining way, because you're just like, you don't know where we're going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like the second time around, like, you know, you'll be able to appreciate like the story and like just the little things and uh, and like and even just like track like the arc a little better. Like, yeah. Knowing like what's coming. For sure. Um, and I, and I would even imagine reading the fucking books. Would reading you, reading the books. <laughs> well, I luckily I find three hours, uh, you know, here and there to go watch a movie. Um, yeah. I unfortunately just do not have the uh, the, the uh, maturity to read a book for <laughs> for an extended period of time of that length. I'm in quickly. that same boat, but I'm trying to change my life. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to read. There's like I'm a Monday, Monday, <laughs> Monday. Great time to read. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, dude, Dune 2 was, it's sick. It's, yeah, I, I will it, say, dude, see it, it see it in the biggest theater yeah. that you can. Yeah, it's definitely worth seeing in theaters, like that one. Oh, you sure. have to, yeah. For like, sure. I, dude, it it really just fucking, I know we've talked about it nausea, but it really just fucking pisses me off, uh, like, when I just hear people, like, not wanting to go to the theater to watch a movie, and like, okay. they'd rather watch it at home. It just, like, drives me crazy. That's fair, but it, in their defense, we, I, I picked up on some movie theater sins last night, or uh, Thursday night when we went to see sure. this. Um, one thing, first of all, when you go to the movie theater, if you're going to see a movie that is packed, please arrive before the credits end or like the opening trailers end, like the preview end. Drives me nuts when there are like 14 oh, people, people sit- walking when people are through. still sitting in while like right before the movie starts. Yeah. yeah. Or like right. within the first 10 minutes. Drives me nuts. Second, yeah. Secondly, if you are sitting with a drink and you are with your boyfriend or girlfriend, Please be mindful of where your drink is placed so you do not spill it <laughs> over the entire chair in front of you and yourself. This couple sitting next to me and Christina spilled oh their God. entire 64 ounce uh, cup of And you heard whatever. it. Yeah, it was dude. like, a, for as loud as this movie is, it was the quietest part of the whole movie. And it sounded like the most refreshing drink. That was yeah, <laughs> ever created. In yeah, that it sounded delicious. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like it the, sounded just like what you needed, <laughs> like what you hear in the opening previews when they're doing like all yeah, the sh- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the whole wheel of like candy and popcorn and shit. Yeah, it's, that was how exactly. good it looked. <laughs> That's how good sounded. it looked and sounded, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, we'll never know. And the ground will. Yeah, as well as that girl. As well jeans. as as well as that girl's jeans. So I liked how uh, apparently Christina was uh, laughing so hard that she had to uh, excuse herself from the theater for. Uh, she didn't get up. She she just looked at me like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like, don't react, please. Please don't make a noise. So luckily she didn't laugh. <laughs> she OK, just, like internalized it and close her mouth. Um, oh, my God, that's funny. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah. If you are eating candy where it requires you to open it with this, like, ra- loud plastic wrapper shit, like, if you get a bag of Sour Patch Kids. or like, Dude, just open Twizzlers, it before the movie starts. Open it before the movie starts when the trailers are playing. If you can't get there before and do it at that point, do it at a point when there's music playing, large gunfire, fighting, uh, yeah. bass, anything other than. Don't when- do it when someone is just standing in a room. <laughs> That's not the time. Or delivering an important monologue to the concept and premise of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up in those moments. When I need to know what's happening, I'm just hearing... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Shut up down there. <laughs> Nothing's better than when you go like to a theater with a bunch of old people. It's just, oh god! <laughs> they really tell you how they feel, yeah, dude. I was at Broad- I was on Broadway watching a <laughs> Good Night Oscar, and this I was sitting in like the back row working, and like <laughs> this old guy, he was sitting behind these two younger guys, and the younger guys had like these Twizzlers or whatever, and he was he's silently just like eating, <laughs> and it was like. Oh my god! <laughs> and then the whole guy's like kind of peeping, peeping, and then he finally was like, "Can you stop that? It's disturbing." 
I remember you telling me that. Dude. <laughs> I wanted to laugh so loud. Wait, like, he said, do not do not do that? What you- <laughs> yeah, he was like, can you not do that? Ne-? He was like, can you please not do that? It's disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> it's disturbing. <laughs> As if he was speaking for the entire theater. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. Oh. As, as if he was just screaming profanity. <laughs> yeah. That's in the same ballpark as him opening up uh, some fucking raisinets. Yeah. Just, just putting his hand in the bag to take out a couple and eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he does. Can you please not do that? It's, it's just... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, I yeah, do it. that before Dune. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. um, uh, nothing against old people. Like we love you guys too. Uh, do, you, <laughs> do your thing. Yeah, we're not ages here. Yeah, we're not ages at all. Yeah, it's- I'm going to my mother's 65th birthday. Oh yeah, which, oh, this uh, is being released afterwards. So <laughs> she's gonna love that segue. We going from old you. people to talk about my mom's <laughs> birth. <laughs> we love you so much. It wasn't meant to be an yeah. age-related segue. Not at all. But it is a celebratory you, segue because we love you. That's and right. We know that you did not see this coming. Nor did we. Nor did we. But it wasn't in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> it was not in the notes. As much of this episode. <laughs> it's not in the no. Notes. But, um uh, or what wasn't expected in the notes this year. Yeah. Was uh the Twitter explosion of Quiet on Set. Oh yeah. The uh HBO documentary. That about. was that was that documentary was that was something. That was something. That was wildly uh eye opening. Yeah. I um it made sense in a lot of ways because one thing I always was curious about or like just found interesting was how all those kids from Nickelodeon, like all those shows that were out in the early two thousands, late nineties, mm-hmm. like only Keenan and like kind of Kel were the only successful ones out yeah. of it. Like everybody else just like didn't have any sort of like remote acting career afterwards. Well, I'm, which well I found interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was kind of the thing though. It was like Amanda Bynes is like well on her way to being that oh, yeah. that girl. Like I think her last big movie role that I know of was uh Easy A. Yes. So like, you know, she was well on her way. You know, she's like the main uh antagonist in that movie. Right. So she which was, was 2007 2010 yeah Tw- yeah it came out in 2010 okay so about 14 years ago yeah um wow. but but you know nothing said that she wasn't going to be successful as she had been for like a decade since she was yeah. she was a kid and then uh, just had a, a very hard uh hard fall she did um, um which is a shame it was it was very unexpected uh, but apparently it was the story of quite a few of those kids. Yeah, Nickelodeon did not seem yeah. like the place you wanted to work uh, back in the day. Or it, I mean, you did in terms of probably the paycheck you were getting, depending on who you were, but uh, yeah. not in terms of like just overall well-being. Yeah, it didn't seem like a very... Seemed pretty tough. Yeah, it seemed like a very fucked up place to work, let alone be a kid in. Um, yeah, like it seemed, yeah, like it was fucked up for the adults. So, yeah. like, and the kids, like, you know, of course it's going to be even like worse for them. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, it was really, yeah, it was, it was pretty upsetting. Um, yeah, very much to so. say the least. And then, of course, you know, the whole third episode with, uh, with, uh, Drake. Yeah. With Drake Bell. Yeah. With Drake, uh, that was, with Drake that was, Bell, that was brutal. That was brutal. That was very brutal. Yeah. Um, I, I love Drake and Josh, and I think what I was just we were t- we were talking about this uh, w- an all time show. It's yeah, it's an all time. Like, that's show. A, that's a very important show to me and my upbringing. Yeah. Is, is Drake and Josh because you watched it like when you would get home from school, like in yep. middle school, late high school, or like early high school. Yeah, it's like and, four o'clock, five yeah, o'clock every and day. You just watch like one or two episodes, and for whatever reason, they hit every time. They slapped every time. It was just yeah. ridiculous humor. Um, and I don't know. It just worked. It worked at, at that particular time. Um, yeah. And they, yeah, that was like a golden era. Like, yeah, that was, like all the sh- all the shows on, like on that network, like fucking, you know, Zoe 101. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, iCarly and uh, Nets of Classified. Like all of, I know he didn't do uh, Dan Schneider didn't do yeah. Nets of Classified, but like all like and obviously SpongeBob and like yeah. that was just like a 
just a great time to be watching Nickelodeon as a kid. Yeah, Nickelodeon. And I mean, uh, yeah, and then you you hear what ha- what's happening behind the scenes. And you're just like, Jesus Christ, wow, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so were you a were you a Nickelodeon kid or more of a Disney Channel kid? Uh, you know it's it's actually kind of funny. So like. It's, it sounds weird saying this, and it's slightly embarrassing because this is a film and television podcast, uh, and I'm I'm almost thirty. But uh, I didn't really like watch a lot of SpongeBob. That's fair. I didn't watch a lot of SpongeBob either. But like, I ne- feel weird because I'm a millennial who like can't quote SpongeBob. But I feel like SpongeBob was for the later millennial, like the ninety. You're 94, so yeah, 94. You, I feel like you were on the cusp of it. So like, I feel like yeah, I know a lot of people at 93 who were like obsessed with SpongeBob. <laughs> but that's the thing is, I'm 92, and I don't really like. I didn't really watch SpongeBob. The only reason I watched SpongeBob was because my brother, who was three years younger than me, 96, okay. and then my nephew, who's 2001. So yeah. like, he was a baby watching it, and he liked it. And then my brother was just like a little kid, and he liked it. So. I just by association was like, oh, this is a stupid show, but it's kind of funny. So I do like it. Yeah. Um, no. And it is funny. Like you even if you watch it now as an adult, you're like, oh, that's like objectively funny. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculously it's, like it's ridiculous that, that they're posing this premise in that a they're children's putting this show. on a children's show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. But I just for whatever reason, like as a kid, I just didn't watch. But I did watch a lot of Nickelodeon and I probably okay. watched more. Because that was a, that was what I was gonna say was that I feel like I watched more Nickelodeon than I did Disney Channel. Disney Channel, but I did watch a lot of Disney Channel. Like so, I was a big I was a big uh, Zach and Cody guy. Okay, so that was the thing is like I remember my crossover from Nickelodeon to Disney Channel. It was originally Nickelodeon from like Hey Arnold, Doug, all that. Oh like, yeah, those days of the late nineties, early two thousands, and then yeah. like once I hit like two thousand three, two thousand four. I was like Disney Channel, even Stevens, even um, Stevens. Yeah, that was a Lizzie big one. McGuire, yeah, smart guy would be on that shit. Sister, sister, like they had a they had a solid. Yeah, dude, like, sister, sister was the shit. Yeah. I fucking loved sister, sister. Yeah, uh, Disney Channel had a solid. It was a big Maori guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loved them. Shout out the Maoris. <laughs> yeah, all three of them. All three of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it Tia, Tamara, and Taj? Taj. Yeah. Yeah. So they're very successful now. Shout too. out the parents for making yeah. very easy names to recite yeah. to get in sequence <laughs> and keeping them and keeping them level he- headed. To, yeah, through all of that because they were definitely all child actors, all three of them. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. were like, yeah, they're like they were good kids who were raised right and became like successful, uh, yeah. responsible adults, which yeah. uh, unfortunately is not the is not the case for for everyone who starts out as a child actor. The You're majority. very vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them, like yeah. most of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're very vulnerable. You're a kid. You have a lot of people taking advantage of you. Adults taking advantage of you. Of this course is it's fair. fair. And 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 if, then and then once you're an adult yourself, like no one gives a shit about you. Exactly. Like that's, and like you feel like you're hor- and then you have the rest of your life. That's horrible. And I'm feeling like I bet they feel like they probably can't tell their story, and like it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. unless more people like are you know doing it as well and making them feel like they have a fucking. Or they're not alone, man. I can't imagine what that would feel like. That's it's just so fucked up on so many levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Whether you. Were, yeah. It's just. Uh, yeah, it was very. It was just very upsetting. It was upsetting. Um, it was very well done because I wanted to keep watching it. But afterwards, I was like, oh, my God, that's yeah, just. I, yeah, I'm just like, I, I'm glad I know it. But <coughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I very, wish I didn't very upset. Wish I didn't know it. Wish it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I guess credit where credits due for well Drake Bell and for everyone who spoke in the documentary, yeah. like talking about what happened. Everybody who came forward, shared their story, was brave enough to put forth an effort in participating in that documentary, whether it was giving a statement, uh doing whatever you felt necessary. Uh hats off to you. Yeah. Um you guys shaped our generation in childhood in many ways. Uh so I do feel I do feel like shit that that came at that that high of a price, but yeah, um, you know I don't I can't say I'd be the man I am today if I didn't have all that and fucking jo- Drake and Josh and jo- or Josh and Drake or whatever <laughs> Drake <and> Josh. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Drake was the lead of the yeah. show. No, he was. Um, uh, but I will say too, even though I will say Josh Peck, uh, some of my early childhood like big time laughs were from Josh. Peck oh yeah, on Josh. Drake and Josh. Yeah, he was he was a force of nature. Yeah, <laughs> Josh was very funny on that. Very funny. Um, I was also gonna say I did notice that you know this was Nickelodeon related. 
don't really hear much about like Disney Channel having much disruption uh, with their childhood actors, with the exception of kind of, um, I think really. I mean, yeah, Sh- Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah, Shia LaBeouf is the only one yeah. that I can really relate to. Where but I think like, he, I mean, from what it seems like, he already had it pretty rough before he joined right. Disney Channel. So yeah, whether but, he was on Disney or not, and I would say he ascended higher than all of them on an oh, acting yeah. scale, as far as all those. In ter- yeah, in terms uh, of an acting scale, yeah, yeah. Um, but Disney Channel, as far as like the work environment and just those yeah. shows, and well, Selena you know, Gomez was, too. Like Selena yeah. Gomez, very, very successful. Very, it seems yeah. pretty. I mean, Hillary Duff. I mean, yeah, like, Hillary Duff. Yeah. Um. So I mean, there's uh the Ren on uh even Steven. She's got a podcast that's pretty successful. Like she talks with other former. Oh actors. yeah, 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 yeah. I've um, seen that. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. So point I'm making is that it seems like there was definitely a different culture, possibly present at Disney. Um. Yeah, and maybe when they were cultivating their shows uh, back in. The- well, then again, though, is like there was a one of the guys that showed the documentary who like like assaulted a child like in a parking lot after he got arrested and released from jail. Like, or uh, yeah, no, he arrested, went to jail, yeah. got hired by Disney Channel. Oh, was it Disney Channel? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was Nickelodeon rehire him. Well, no. Um, so he was hired with Nickelodeon. Oh, because he was on the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yes. When he got hired. Got yeah, you. he got hired, uh, and then went to yeah, and then went to do Sweet Life. Um, um, well, yeah, I think that you should definitely do everything you can to nurture children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be great actors. <clears throat> and only that. If, let them. Yeah. Let them do the school plays. Pursue. Yeah. Uh, you know, let them do, let them do just fun stuff. Not trying to make yeah. any moolah off them. Yeah. No, no reason to sell their souls to the devil. It's no, uh, it's not worth it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a frantic episode, but <laughs> and just a series in general. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, check it out. <laughs> no, totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, I meant this episode between us. The the podcast episode is a frantic episode. Uh, <laughs> oh yes. Oh, this episode, yes. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> I was just saying in the back of my head. I feel like we talked about this more than we talked about Dune Part Two. <laughs> we have a little bit. Um, but circling back to Dune. Well, circling back to Dune. Rebecca Ferguson. I yeah, love her face. We're on the sand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, Rebecca Ferguson. <laughs> I love her face. I love her face. It's it, it She is be... like like she's legit one of my favorite film actors. I was going to say at she, the moment. She for sure is I love everything I see in. her in. Yeah, everything she's in. I'm always like I like you in this and I like this movie. Yes, like, you are making this film better. Yeah, you make this you make this movie and franchise better for whatever reason. You tote both of those in your package. Like And thank you for looking the way that you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Continue to look the way you Continue do. Continue to look beautiful and powerful and thank you. Yes. Um I like what Yeah, she's no, she's incredible. She's incredible. Yes. In she's this great. movie. She's awesome. Um probably gives the best performance of the movie. She's great, dude. Yeah, she doesn't say much. It's 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 all in her eyes, which I really like. Yeah, uh, it's all in her eyes and just like just the way she carries herself and Yeah, dude. She's just like it's a hard part and she fucking just owns it. Yeah, she's great in it. Um Yeah. I really like Yeah, her and Austin Butler are probably my two favorite like performances, I would say. Yeah, I would say Austin Butler definitely steals the show when he comes on cuz he's I mean, he's so, memorable. Yeah, he's just so deadly and yeah, he is just like that whole, death in pure form. Yeah, that yeah, that's exactly what he is. The whole arena setup, um, where he's in there so fighting, sick. bro, it's nuts. Um, yeah, and yeah, Florence Pugh. Never um, seen that before. Never seen that. But Florence Pugh, she's there. Florence um, Pugh's great. Um, the Emperor's there. Christopher Walken's great. My People man. know it's Christopher Walken. He's on the poster. My man, I, I love that guy. Yeah, he was. I just loved that he was just fully Christopher Walkening in yeah. in this movie. <laughs> fully Christopher Walkening. You know why I killed your father? He was a coward. He was a coward. <laughs> yeah, when he's on the throne, he's he's yeah. really thrusting it. Baron. Yeah. I do, what brings you to my throne? <laughs> <laughs> I do wish I would have seen him, or like they kind of would have put him up a little bit more in those like situations where he's like actually sitting at the throne as like this like. You know, spouting out type of emperor, like yeah. So his, so him. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I could have used more like monologuing from yeah. Christopher Walken, 
And like, like, how do you not do that when you have Christopher Walken? He's right. one of the great monologists. In exactly. Film. And to like dress it up even more in like the whole Dune setting, like putting him on like this epic throne or something and talking. Yeah. Um, that would have been that would have been nuts. Um, that would have been nuts. But also, again, we're nitpicking a, a near perfect film. Oh, yeah, for sure. You said uh, that, too. Um, yeah. You said that's what it's one of the best action movies you've ever seen. I think it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Oh, wow. um, OK. I mean, it's definitely I mean, it's definitely in like the top hundred that I've seen. Oh, yeah. Top, um, <clears throat> top 50, which uh, which isn't I know, you know, maybe isn't saying much, but it's like it, that's a it's a phenomenal in inter- and especially in terms of like, again, I can't stress enough, like seeing it in a theater and seeing yeah. it on this huge screen. Um, It was just like, wow, yeah. like that was wow. like when you go to for Wow. What an experience. Uh, no, but seriously, like it's such it is an experience um, and it's it's why you go to the movies like. Yeah, I felt the same way when we saw like Killers of the Flower Moon or when we saw like. Yeah. Oppenheimer or Mission Possible. I'm just like, yo, this is like this is what this is about. This is, yeah, this is why we this, this is why, why we come. This, this is why we pause. Uh, I was going to say this is why we come. <laughs> this is why we go. This is why we go to the movies, as Nicole Kidman says. Proudly. Oh boy. Oh. Man. I actually leaned over to Rachel, who, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, but Rachel was just like so skittish throughout the whole movie because it's so loud and like people are fighting and the whole like three hours. She's just like ah. Oh. <laughs> it was very sweet. Um, three hours. Like she did it like two minutes into the movie, just like oh. And I was like, I was like, this is the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this whole movie is about. <laughs> It's only going to go up from here. He was like, yeah, I was like, this is where we're starting from. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. And then I think I think basically the whole Austin Butler scene, she was just like, oh, just like, <laughs> which I also think is the proper reaction. Yeah. Um, it's a gruesome scene. Yeah. All everything um, with him really is pretty spooky. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, what are your thoughts on Chalamet? I mean, I, I know you think he's a good actor which he i appreciate is. you asking I, this question um, but i i just i want to know your opinion of like do you see do you see lasan on gaib when you look at uh <laughs> timothy chalamet no no uh, okay <laughs> that's the short answer that's the short answer okay um, but i mean let me be a film critic real quick I, I mean like i like this movie a lot but not because of timothy chalamet yeah you know what i mean like that's I think the biggest you're not going. No one's really going to the movie to see, see Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I honestly would probably be saying I'm going more to see fucking Zendaya in it than I am. Timothy yeah, Chalamet. sure. Um, I mean, yeah, she's central to the movie. Yeah, so she's great. Like, yeah, what is her character arc now? Like, where is she going? How is she come back? Yeah, and, you know. So I think Timothy Chalamet's character is molded for someone like him to portray. Sure. But I don't know if I necessarily see longevity with Timothy Chalamet portraying these roles uh, in the future, um, whether that be outside of the Dune series or just him playing more. You central. mean like an action franchise? type? Yeah, thing? I just yeah. don't see him as that type of guy. I think he's for sure. Uh, an, uh, that dude would fucking thrive in any artist like Ari Aster, uh, Greta Gerwig. um, Fucking even oh, PTA, yeah. like it, yeah, he could, could be like any like, he could he could he could be any auteur's muse, correct for the next twenty years and for have sure. a thriving career, absolutely. But uh, and he probably will do that. And I hope that he sees he's that filming path. the Bob Dylan movie right now. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah. but but that's what I mean. Is like him taking on more of a Joaquin Phoenix type of approach. I don't know if I see that for him more as I see him in more of a like. Uh, I don't want to put him up there with Leo, but I would say like. He's like a step above Ryan Gosling, like in between Ryan Gosling and like a Leo is like like his, that's where his trajectory is. Yeah, that's his range, in my yeah. opinion. Um, So he for sure is an Oscar nominated worthy talent, if not yeah. winning talent in the right role. I just don't know <laughs> yeah, what that I mean, role he's... is for him other than some sort of like period piece. You know what I mean? Like where he's right. Like call me. I mean, go, dude, call me by your name is like one of the best. That's one. That's some of the best acting you'll ever see. And that's why he's do. so good in it because he's so he's so into that character. Yeah, he was like, just so that kid. Yeah. yeah. So that that was that's what I think his lane is is like being him in a way, 
but like he has this look about him where he could really range from like a medieval time to like fucking ancient time to in the future. Like he's he's got range with his look. Yeah, so I think that he's helps just him. yeah. It's yeah. it 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 just it sucks for him because he's just so he's just so scrawny that like even the fight scenes like I get like just I kind of inherently do. I was just like he's not actually doing that. <laughs> You know, which yeah. like kind of sucks because you just like and I wasn't thinking that throughout the movie, but like there were certain times where like, you yeah, know, Paul's just doing some crazy shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's that, that really is that really Timmy? Right. But like when you see Austin Butler like fighting, you're just like, yo, that dude. Yeah. So I in, in so, he's, he's he's young. Um, yeah, I think. But I guess it also kind of works, too, because like I heard a good I heard a good point of like because I was listening, as I always do, listen to the big picture. And they were talking about it. Shot him out every podcast. Yeah. So. Until, you know, someone, uh, you know, calls us. Um, <laughs> we're not reaching out to them. I don't know why I would, why I would expect them to. Um, but they mentioned it kind of like it helps with like the the idea of doubt in like who Paul is and like who fucking like him being. The, okay. Lasana, he been, OK. Like, you know, kind of like. Is like an in you know kind of an unconscious layer of like yeah how like who would believe like this dude is like just a sick fighter right like okay. he must be Jesus because like look at him like you would gotcha. think that he is uh, that, that works that works that, that works that, not saying that that, that was a reason that, that works it, for Dune it works for Dune oh yeah no exactly works yeah. for Dune um also I will just say just to wrap up really quickly because I really want to eat this bagel um <laughs> uh the like him riding yeah him riding that sandworm is like probably like top 10 scenes I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. Like seeing, um, that, seeing that in a theater, like that was pretty tits. That was fucking amazing. That was wild. I also just liked that the whole like ambush scenes of the Fremen. Uh, yeah. Is, and the scene. Yeah. Right. And right after that, they'd have that ambush scene, yeah. that sick ambush scene. Dude, that was wild when they am like, that was nuts. Yeah. They just I, pop up. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, um, like, dude, Denis just fucking, he killed it. Yeah. Knocked it out of the fucking park. For sure. Um, I Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for the next one. Um, one of my favorite movies I think I've seen in IMAX probably ever. Um, yeah, this, I mean, this is like a, this is a, a hard number two for me. Yeah, behind it's, it's for sure in my top three, I would have to say. I'd really have to think about it, but I don't think I've ever seen a movie so action packed and also like storyline driven. Um, and just, you know, put together so well, yeah, uh, in IMAX before. So it's up there. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah. If you haven't seen quite on set, that's also, that's on HBO max. I think doom part one and you can probably buy doom part two on HBO or max or whatever the fuck right now. Um, but go see doom part two in a theater. Yeah. Go see doom part two in a theater. If you can, if yeah, not, you can and you should. Yeah, and if not, uh, watch. And if you haven't seen part one, watch that one first before you go see part two. Yeah, so, I know people like to skip. Um, don't oh yeah, skip. gotta watch part one. Gotta watch part one. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna give part two an A. Uh, I think I gotta give it a. I think I gotta give it an A plus. Oh, you really liked it. Cool. That's- I really, I really, really liked it. Well, I hope that is all the motivation that our listeners need to go see it. Um, It is all the motivation we need to wrap this up and eat these bagels. So much like these bagels are currently, that's a wrap. Yeah.